It's more than just your output, more than a mic. When you hear your shout out, you know it's all right. Put on your magic pants and let's go. We're cruising into the power zone. Clip in, set yourself free. Come on and take a ride with me. You know what you need to know and what's it all about. Everything you need, it's on the clip out. Welcome to the Clip Out Podcast. I have no idea what episode we are on. 312, because last week was 311. Oh, that's right. Yes. Episode 312. This is Crystal O'Keefe. And this is Tom O'Keefe. Probably figured that out by now. Yes. No, I was well aware. Oh, I would good. say probably from almost the minute you sat down. Really? I was aware. Almost. Almost. Okay. It's been a crazy day. <laughs> that it, it has. At one point today, <laughs> I, re- I realized today that... I now have three different attorneys. Yep. How did that happen? I didn't do anything wrong, and I have three different attorneys. I have, well, I, we've got still custody stuff with my ex wife for a 19 year old. Uh, make that make sense. And then, uh, and then your personal injury attorney from when you got hit by the car. Yeah. And then, We'll go into it another time, but I had some issues with my other podcast where someone was trying to take our name, and now I have a trademark attorney. Yeah. So um, maybe we'll tell that story on the Patreon. Yeah, but, uh, that's a good idea. But so I'm just, and at one point I, w- I was talking to them all essentially simultaneously, and I'm like, what the hell? Like, if you have three <laughs> attorneys, you should be a criminal or a billionaire. Yeah, and, and, and I the am neither. Funny thing is, we didn't initiate any of these. No, not one of them. Like, we didn't. <laughs> In, in none of the cases did we initiate it, did we <laughs> do anything wrong, like nothing. And it's all of a sudden we're like lawyered up to the bejesus. I'm just like, what the hell is happening? So it has been a day. It's been a day. Yeah. So uh, so uh, we should also <laughs> remind people uh, that we will be in Orlando. Yes. On, on June next, 9th. June 9th. 6 so that, p.m. at Splitsville. At Splitsville. So we will see you there. Come out and say hello. We'd love to hang out with we you. We really would. We don't have a lane, but we do have a table. Yeah. So I mean, our experience at these things is we're usually all just chat, chat, chat. Yeah. There's no time for the bowling. For sure. So um, but yeah, we'd love to hang out. So uh, besides that, we'll what, pray tell, do you have in store for people this week? Well, let's see here. Um, Peloton has some big news in showroom that we're going to discuss. Uh, we're also going to talk about the new seat posts that are coming out, the replacement ones. Um, all kinds of, of other things, including um, what's go, what Peloton did for Memorial Day. There's also some new uh, Pelotons in other hotels. We're going to... Hotels are going to become a, a big topic today, so we'll yeah. talk about that a lot. Not to mention, we have a visit from Dr. Jen, and we cover the topic caring for ill parents without losing focus on ourselves. Uh, and then we also talk about all the instructor news because there is a ton of it. We also have a visit from Angelo at MetPro. Does menopause affect your diet? A little competition news. Uh, and then in case you missed it. Awesome. Well, before we get to all that, shameless plugs, don't forget we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, wherever you find a podcast, you can find us while you're there. Be sure and follow us so you never miss an episode. Maybe leave us a review. Super helpful. Greatly appreciated. You can also find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash the clip out. While you're there, like the page, join the group. You can always find us on YouTube where you can watch these episodes. Hello, YouTube. And that's available at youtube.com slash the clip out. We've got a newsletter uh, at the clip that you can sign up for. We'll send you the links and things like that. And you can also um, find our Patreon. So it's over at Patreon. You can uh, sign up for that. You'll get ad free episodes. You'll get the episodes early when we get them early. Sometimes we don't, but uh, sometimes we do. And when we get them early, you get them early. And uh, we also like to record bonus episodes where I'll tell you about how someone tried to steal my other podcast. So, um, <laughs> so, uh, th- so uh, yeah, there's all that. Let's uh, let's dig in, shall we? Oh, oh wait. You wait. didn't talk about our interview this week. Oh, geez. Yeah. Our interview this week is Moms of Peloton. Yeah. So that's Melissa Ferreira, yeah. if you if you know her real name. Um, so yeah, tons of fun stuff to talk about this week. Absolutely. So uh, you're going to want to stick around for all that? Okay. We shall. Oh, I mean, let's dig in, shall we? <laughs> we shall. 
<laughs> Peloton in the news. We got some sad news, I think, over the weekend uh, and a clip out exclusive that the showrooms are about to have their their pay slash yeah peloton in general wanted to cut their payroll for the showrooms by at least 40 percent as they did that what what they ended up doing was taking commissions from all the showroom employees and then in addition to that um they moved them over to hourly employees they gave them a slight bump but but not enough to offset the loss of commission sales. Yeah, yeah. What, what we're hearing is that it for many people, it was cutting their, their pay by as much of a third. Um, and that many of these people are going to have to move on to other jobs. Uh, they also indicated that they are no longer called sales associates. They are now brand ambassadors. Um, and some people were not really happy about that new title yeah uh and my understanding is that uh, this is happening to all sales associates so inside sales and showrooms but the reason that we are highlighting the showrooms is because showrooms are you know this is where a lot of people had their very first moment with a peloton of any kind and um it's uh, a lot of really good people that we are going to be losing, and it's just really sad. It is. I also feel like this is kind of getting out in front of more store closings. It's a way to, I don't know, it feels like it's a way to purge the payroll. Yeah. B- you know, before, without having to just come in and fire people, because they know when they make this adjustment, a lot of people are going to be like, well, gots to go. And then they just won't replace those people. Yeah, they won't replace those people, or they know that these store, these showrooms are not long for this world. My guess is by the time this is all said and done, I bet you we probably have showrooms in the top 10 markets, and that's about it. Um, I think the thought process, which from a purely cold and calculated business standpoint i understand is that you can get them at dicks you can get them at amazon you can see one in real life at dicks if you want like there's all there there are other places to see them in real life peloton is so prevalent now that if you want a peloton chances are you have a friend who has one so you could you you could pro- you could go check it out at their house if you just needed to touch it first. It's a very different world yeah. than it was, you know, a few years ago when when they started ramping up all those retail sell- sales rooms. And I feel like, um, you know, the other aspect of it is that if they don't, if, if, not only can you still ch- try them out, and you have other people that have them. I think this also it goes along with the line that like they're not expecting to continue to put new new hardware out, right? right. Well, like, I mean, ultimately, there's a finite amount of fitness equipment, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you mean, but but if you needed the retail sell, sales showrooms to teach people, this is what a tread is, right? This, this is what now, a, a rower is. I you will know? say, and there's probably someone screaming at their at their car stereo right now that yes you can get a bike and you almost everybody probably has a friend or an acquaintance that has a bike but they probably don't have a friend or acquaintance that has a tread they almost certainly don't have a friend or acquaintance that has a rower Mm -hmm. so um and i know you can get a bike at dicks can you get a tread or a rower at dicks i honestly don't know well i think that they have opened up amazon to bike plus i don't think that I don't remember off the top of my head. I, I feel like there might have been more availability at Dick Sporting Goods than there was at Amazon, but I could be misremembering that. Yeah. Um, so I I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah. But I also think as they pivot to, by their own admission, focusing on getting app subscribers and, and pivoting away from equipment, I think that like I get that the showrooms just don't matter in the way they did three or four years ago and and that sucks it's it's cool to walk into your mall and see a peloton store i think also the problem how often do you walk into your mall anymore so i mean i can't tell you the last time i've been to a, a real store on a regular basis like every yeah. once in a while we go to one because i have to right but i i don't go it's to not stores like it used to be no. yeah like it's you know um it, it's just it, it the pandemic really changed that for a lot of people i think malls are obviously already on the decline of course but, but for sure yeah now they were in the upscale malls that tend to be a little bit more recession proof yes but uh but i still think it took a toll and I, and I think that they will stay in those markets like you said some of those those bigger markets are going to still keep one in in those really nice areas but who knows because of we you know we have definitely learned over time that had a lot what what showrooms closed first had a lot to do with 
where they could in the leases their leases it. yeah, yeah. Um, I also think that it's important to note that this change is going to take place on July 1st um, if employees stay until August uh, then they will continue to get their commission for the next two months um, and it's also important to note that at least in the people's minds who have brought this to our attention, they feel that it is particularly bad timing considering that Barry just got a raise. Now, if you're looking at it just from the perspective of, like you said, cold, hard business, Tom, but his uh, his stock options, he got, a, he got a raise on his base pay, but his stock options have changed considerably. Yeah. Um, and I also think that it's important to remember that and he's the one that's turning the ship around. He's the one that has the most risk here. Um, well, I, I don't know that I'd say he has the most risk. Well, I mean, I think like it, it, no it's him what, making a decision and it yeah. all rests on his shoulders, whether it fails or it works. That's yes. all I'm saying by risk. Yeah. And I guess from my vantage point, like if Peloton went tits up tomorrow, Barry's going to be OK. No, absolutely. You I know? didn't mean his personal yeah. finances. I meant from the who's making decisions. Yeah. Um, but. I wouldn't be able to make this decision. This is why I can't be a CEO. Like, I, I, re- I couldn't. Yeah. I mean, I'm dead serious. If I was just like, oh, I have to lay off all these people. Right. And now I have to close all these showrooms and now I have to change all their pay and knowing how unhappy they would be. Th- this is why this is why they, they do get paid the big bucks to make these yeah. awful and gut wrenching decisions. I, I think we should also say that a lot of times you hear these stories where, you know, they lay off a bunch of people and the CEOs getting a raise in the tens of millions of dollars where it's like you could carve out a third of that and keep a good chunk of these people. He's getting a raise of like, what, $250,000, which is not an insubstantial amount of money, but it's not like if he gave back that 250, they could hire all these people back. Like it's not, that's not the optics here. Just no. To be and I also, I just want to, say that for all the people that are still on this headspace of this means Peloton is going down the tubes, I kind of think it means a different thing. It's the exact opposite of that. And this means that they are making the hard decisions to make sure that they continue the longevity. I don't like these decisions. I hate whenever Peloton has to change, whether it be changes from we all get together once a year or uh, my favorite instructor leaves it or it's they have to change the amount of people that work there. But I want to say this and I want to I want people to hear this and spread the news because it's important. And that is Peloton is important to stay around long term. And so we're going to have to sometimes make sacrifices for that. This is not a sacrifice I wanted to make. And it's it's not a sacrifice for me personally in the right, way it is to be for clear. the showroom. Yeah. I don't mean that. I mean, the, everything changing, we have to accept if we want Peloton to yeah. be around for a long time. I am not saying that I'm making the same kind of sacrifice that a showroom employee is. For sure. So it's, yeah, they're in a situation where sometimes to expand, you have to contract. And yeah. I think that's, they're in the contraction Exactly. Phase. Exactly. And I don't. It sucks. It does. The replacement seat posts are starting to pop up in people's mailboxes. If you have a big mailbox, <laughs> <laughs> maybe just your front porch. Maybe your front porch. Okay. <laughs> so um, the top for those of you who are watching, uh, if you're not watching, then you can also go see um, our post about this at the clip out dot com. Yes. You can wait till you get the newsletter. Um, But for those of you just listening, I will do my best to describe it. Okay, so we have two posts laying here together. Uh, The top post for those of you looking are uh, that is the old post. Yeah. And the one just below it is the new post. I was like, when you were like, I will do my best to describe it. I'll do it for you. It looks just like the post you got. Yeah, but but (laughs) there are some differences. I'm sure there must be in order for it to be the replacement part. But just to the naked eye, it doesn't look any different. Well, it is it is longer. It's a half an inch longer. So there is a very obvious. Stands a reason that a woman would spot that. <laughs> <laughs> and what about its girth? Uh, I think the other thing to point out is that the welds look very different. Uh, I don't know how they are different because yeah. I don't understand welding, but the joints look very, very different than the the first one. So gotcha. um, anyway, there you go. Yeah, but uh, but they're starting to show up for people. So hopefully, uh, more people get them and they can get back to riding. Yeah. If you're an app user and you're upset with the new tier pricing, we have discovered a price hack that could possibly work for you. Now, just to be clear, this isn't going to work for all people. Right. Um, and, and so it's not a magic bullet. But if you are in a household where multiple people could possibly use the Peloton, or maybe you're in a relationship, but you don't live with that person, you don't mind sharing an account, this could be a solution to get more content. Yes. So... 
Peloton, we know all the app tiers. I'm not going to go through those again. We know that there's five of them free to the most expensive. Got it. Okay. But what you may not realize is that there is also the guide membership. So there's all access. All access is for people who have a bike, a tread, or a rower. But there's also the guide only membership. And the guide only membership is what I feel like people are kind of just glossing over. So here's the deal. Right now, you can buy a guide for $195. Uh, They originally came out at $295. A lot of people think they're going to go down even further uh, during Prime Days. So watch for that and other sales. Um, But let's just say you buy a guide, whether it be the $195, cheaper, more expensive, whatever. You get it. Here's the thing. If you get a guide only membership, it's $24 a month. You get all of the content on the app automatically. So that means that means if you have a different rower from a different company, you can use it. Uh, and the best part is you get to share it with five people in your home. If you have the app only, any of the app tiers, regular app, you have to use that price is for a single person. So if you are using the free app option, obviously it's free, so it doesn't matter. But right. if you're using the app plus option and that has all of the content, you have to, you have only yourself to share that with for $24. Or you can pay $24 and share it with five other people in your home. Right. So, and if you, um, uh, if you think about it, if you're doing the, the, the intermediate tier, and you're going to share that if you if you have two people in your home doing the intermediate tier, you could buy the guide and then share it and and pay this essentially the same amount of money for all the content. And not only do you get all the content, you get all the guide content. Right. So so all of the guide exclusive workouts that come out and you have seven weeks before you get it anywhere else in the app, you'll get it first thing. And you get all of the things that come with the guide. So you get the, the form tracking, you get the uh, form where you're able to see... Uh, the rep tracking, that's what I meant to say. Uh, and then you're able to track all of your weights and put those in the system, have your weight library. And the best part is this works even for people who have a very, very small amount of space because the guide's like this Yeah, big. it's super <laughs> tiny. So like I know a lot of people are like, I can't get a tread. I can't get a rower because my house or apartment is too small. Well, that is not an issue with a guide in any way shape or form so if you're if you're look if you're an app user and you and you look in the same money this could be a, a very effective way to do it especially when you know if it's if they go on sale again like we think they're going to i think you could snap one up and save yourself some cash long term one more thing about this uh i've had a lot of people reach out to me and be like well you don't know they're not going to change the price well, i don't no, know that i don't, I don't yeah. know that i, I can't know i can't tell gonna, the future i don't know that they're not going to change the price of the bike i don't know that they're yeah like <laughs> but what i will tell you is this uh i did reach out to peloton sales before i wrote this article and before we we did this approach we do research people yeah and um the salesperson indicated that there is no plans to change this so right now nobody has any kind of plan to change this and and so i don't know might change but it might not so there you go how about it we just celebrated memorial day over the weekend and or i guess we should say commemorated memorial we commemorated that is correct it's for people who died serving our country so you don't want to celebrate that necessarily no uh, you do not you (laughs) do not you're grateful but it's not a party Uh, peloton had uh, partnered with the uso over memorial day just to be clear we know what memorial day means but you can't send a message to the dead troops so right so this is a great way so what they did is they teamed up with the uso so that you can send messages to troops who are currently serving and who have served uh so they're still making a sacrifice it's still a great way to to say hey we are grateful for what you are doing also and uh that's it's nice because if you this is a great way to celebrate what people are doing right now show appreciation while people are still with us yes Life Hacker, we just gave you a hack, but here's Life Hacker, uh, (laughs) has a review of Peloton's new free app subscription, and they actually kind of dug it. Yeah, they said it actually, they said it looks pretty good, actually. Yeah, they seemed (laughs) pleasantly surprised. They were like, oh, I thought we came here to on it, but it turns out. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and this is in Australia. I think that is important to note because, you know, one of the things Peloton is trying to do here is they are trying to get all those app subscriptions like you, you talked about earlier. Right. But you got to move to other countries to be able to do that. So Peloton is trying to not only get app subscriptions, but also grow app subscriptions in a lot of countries. 
Australia is a great place to do that because they are a very fit country and they are really um, they are very open to Peloton. So this is great that they had such an awesome review. Absolutely. That's a huge win for Peloton. Speaking of Australia, 9.com.au has a review of the tread, <laughs> and they also seem to dig it. There's a lot of digging going on down there in Australia. <laughs> in Australia, you dig all the way to Cleveland. <laughs> well, they, are, uh, they were really surprised that the training is so effective on Peloton. Their original thought process was there was no way that they could ever run for eight minutes straight. Then they trained with right. the coaches on Peloton, and boom suddenly they are running for eight minutes at a time. Uh, that says a lot about engagement and consistency because those are really important things. I mean, anybody can go outside and run, uh, it, anybody that has the ability to run. But um, if you don't stick with it and it doesn't come naturally to you to get better, you do need some kind of ability to be engaged and have somebody push you. So that's pretty cool. Women.com is talking about uh, whoop and its compatibility with Peloton. Yeah, I thought this was very interesting um, because it combines two of my favorite things, Peloton <laughs> and Whoop. Uh, but it's interesting because I I don't think besides myself... I thought you were going to say women. I I've, was like, well now. I don't think that I've ever heard anybody talk about Peloton and Whoop outside of people in the Peloton community. And we talk about different trackers. Yeah. So I just thought it was interesting. There was a whole article by women.com discussing something so generically. Right. Um, and they talk about like there's other fitness trackers that you can use and why would you want to use it? Uh, and there's a lot of people that don't see the need to have whoop, but I am not one of those people. I, I am a firm believer that I like to have my whoop and I like it to track all my metrics. It's the best around for sleep. Yes, even better than Aura Ring, in my opinion. Uh, and I love its recovery metrics. And I've tried using Athletic and I do use Athletic for certain things. You can use Athletic with Apple Watch. But I will say whoop continues to still have the best recovery metrics that match me. Also, it has all this strength tracker things that you can do now. So now it's tracking your strength and it shows the proper strain for your strength, which used to only track your heart rate. There is no other tracker that does that. None. None of them do that. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, I love that they are celebrating that in women.com. And I should say we received no compensation for that. None. Just because I love whoop. Even hotel in Sweetwater, Doral. It's in Miami. Thank you for the translation. <laughs> is uh, breaking ground, but their new hotel is going to have a Peloton in it. So do you think all the even hotels are getting Pelotons in? I don't know. One? This is the first one that I've seen. And, I, and that's why I wanted to mention it, because I thought it was pretty intriguing that we've started seeing we saw this in Hilton we're seeing the Hilton get bigger that partnership we've seen it happen in Weston that partnership has grown uh, so to be able to see another major hotel chain having Pelotons in it I think it's awesome because this isn't just Peloton in their gym this is they have three different room classes one of which has a Peloton in it so oh. uh, I thought that was pretty cool and I would absolutely stay in a hotel if I could find it where I was traveling. Well, that, would, that would make me do that. I have one booked for August. Oh, yay. So there. Yay. In the room? No, but oh, I have... You got e me very excited. I have an even hotel booked for August. Oh, okay. But I don't know if they have Pelotons there or not. Yeah. I thought we were going to change that, but that's a whole other story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they need to hear that conversation. They do not. It's not private. It's just boring. Yes. CNET.com gives you a list of uh, summertime workouts that are great for outdoors and a bunch of th it's a list of things, but uh, Peloton makes the list. Yeah, they do. Uh, we're going to talk about Aptiv later, too. They're on this list, they so on, I yes. want to make sure we, we chat about that. But uh, yeah, Peloton making the list. A lot of different ones did. I just love that they are being considered and included for things like outdoor workouts because they have amazing outdoor workouts. Someday, maybe I'll even get to take place <laughs> with them again. I'm not bitter. Not at all. No. And coming up after this, we're going to talk to Dr. Jen. She has uh, tips and suggestions for those of you caring for ill parents, but still being able to maintain the focus on yourself because that is still important during trying times like that. So stick around. Getting the psychological edge with Dr. Jen. Joining us once again via the magic of ZoomTube is Dr. Jen Mann, licensed marriage, family, and child therapist and sports psychology consultant. She was a five-year national team member in rhythmic gymnastics and sports psychology for USA Gymnastics. It's Dr. Jen. Hello. Hi. Hello. 
Uh, well, we have another anonymous question this week. This one, uh, this one says, I am so out of my routine and I've been dealing with a lot of stress. I know exercise would help me tremendously, but I just can't get myself to do it. I got married a month ago. We have known my dad's cancer is back since Christmas. They honestly don't know if they can help him this time. Besides having a full-time job and a new husband, twice a week I drive over one and a half hours each way if there is no snow or construction to help my parents because my mom is also showing early signs of Alzheimer's, so she can't manage any everything anymore. Like I said, I've been dealing with some stress. I listen to the podcast every week, so I've tried Dr. Jen's tips of doing a five-minute core class just a few times a week or trying different types of classes like bar and shadow boxing or bike boot camps. I'm just such all an all-or-nothing person. I feel like I'm failing. Do I just need to keep trying or be easy on myself knowing some of this will pass eventually and I will fall back into a routine? Oh, this poor woman. I I really, really feel for her as someone who has a ill family member who I care for and um, I have some similar stresses. I really get this. And the answer is yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> um, so yes, should you be easier on yourself? Absolutely. Yes, should you continue doing that five-minute core class and try to build on it? Yes. But I also think that part of what she needs to do is, and it's become such a cliche, but I have to say it anyway, is that it's the old adage that when you're on the airplane and you're with someone, you're with a child and they say like, if the oxygen mask comes down, you got to put it on the kid first before you put it on yourself, because if you pass out, you're no good use to anybody. So I think you've got to view the self-care really differently. And it's very hard when you are taking care of other people who you love in your family and this driving an hour and a half each way, like it's incredibly stressful, just that in and of itself, much less that when you arrive at your parents' home, what you have to see is so heartbreaking. So I really think that having some things that you do for yourself is of the utmost importance. You've got to put gasoline in the tank in order to keep going. Cause this is it. What you're going through between your dad's cancer and your mom's Alzheimer's, it sounds like at the very least your mom is it's going to be a marathon, not a sprint. And so you're going to need to find a way of life temporarily that allows you some self-care. Otherwise, you're going to lose it. And you're no good use to anyone if you break down. So on the days that you are not, first of all, I think on the days that you're driving there, you've got to give yourself a break. <laughs> Like the most you should do is like a five minute stretch class just because it's going to hurt your back and your hips mm -hmm. spending three hours in the car. And when you come back, it, you probably benefit from like a little Chelsea five minute pigeon or which we all know how I feel about that class <laughs> or your four five minute Chelsea or Kristen. But on the other days, you've got to look at look. You should have at least one or two days where you do nothing, where you can just rest. And I think on those other days, what can you do that is small and stop judging yourself for it? Like, I'm coming after you on this. Like, if you do anything, it is an accomplishment. Like, that's what you have to keep in mind. And also that some of your self-care, maybe Peloton, maybe it's a five-minute class, a 10-minute class, a 20-minute class. But also some of it needs to be what will put gasoline in the tank. And sometimes it's Peloton, but sometimes it is doing a crossword puzzle. Sometimes it's watching some really dumb TV that is just like brain candy. Sometimes it's reading a book. Sometimes it's listening to this wonderful podcast. Sometimes it is doing something creative or getting on the phone with a girlfriend and just bitching about how difficult life is right now. But you need to give yourself that because you've got to be putting fuel in the tank and, and using self-care and just stop judging yourself like that's really the core to get through this and and i get this on such a deep profound level personally and professionally like you've got to give yourself a break and you've got to find what will help you have energy not things that will take away energy and judging yourself takes away energy so true absolutely i remember when my mom passed she was in and out of a coma for like the last three months and i didn't do anything 
health related then, but I gained like 40 pounds in that three months just yeah. because I was at the hospital until nine or 10 o'clock at night. And then on the way home, it's like, well, I didn't have time to eat how I would normally eat. So I'm like, just, I just went to McDonald's or Kentucky fried chicken. And so it's like anything she can do is going to be better than, yeah. than doing nothing. So I, absolutely. And also you were probably using food to soothe yourself. It sounds like you were turning to comfort food like fried chicken and mashed potatoes and that kind of stuff in order to get through a difficult time. And sometimes we do that. For sure. So that's, yeah, it's a, it's a, situation there's no two ways about that so well thank you so much for for those words of wisdom uh until next time where can we find you on all social media at dr jen man two ends on jen two ends on man thank you instructors in the news so Selena Samuela announced this week that she is canceling her Ironman race for July. But here's why that's a good thing. Yeah. It, it, so you guys, just to go over the timeline, she had announced in November her intention to do an Ironman in 2023. And then uh, in December is when she had her son Torin. So then she started training after she had Torin, of course. And um, she found that she was really like not where she wanted to be physically um, as far as like just getting right back into that. Uh, and she talked today, or I'm sorry, it was a couple days ago on Instagram about the fact that it was time for her to pivot and change directions. I definitely was concerned about her when she, this is her first Ironman, full Ironman. And uh, I was concerned when she announced that in November. Not because uh, she didn't, she can't handle herself. I was concerned because I know a lot of people who have done Ironmans and they have trained and trained and trained and gotten hurt um, while training and added to the pressure of being a new mom. Like there's already so much pressure when you're a new mom, everything, like everybody judges you. Are you breastfeeding? Are you not breastfeeding? Are you giving them organic food are you making the food yourself are you using uh diapers that are disposable are you i mean it's like the list could yeah. go on for hours about everything that everyone thinks they have something to say about it so to be a new mom to be this high level peloton instructor it, with all these physical expectations that you have as an instructor and then on top of all that do the training that it takes i mean it's like 27 to 37 hours a week of training just training for the iron man that you have to do uh that's that's a lot of pressure for anybody so I personally was really relieved that she decided to do this because it puts such a great example out there for women uh, in the community. I mean, anybody it doesn't have to be people, a woman. Really? Yeah, but anybody, yeah. anybody. Uh, we all put a lot of pressure on ourselves. There's so many of us in the community that are type A personalities and we're like, I'm going to do this come hell or high water, regardless of whether I get hurt, regardless of whether or not I, I have to put other priorities on hold and, and that's going to end up messing up my life in some way. Yeah, we tend to glorify the you know, play through the pain and it's like, and, and there are times when that's, that sort of grit is important to have. But I think there are a lot of times when people end up hurting themselves. And I think it's a great example for people to see that even a Peloton instructor, right? The kind of, I think what a lot of people would consider pinnacle of fitness, or at least certainly in the 98th percentile of fitness, even they can uh, have things that they struggle with and they need to take a step back from, and there's no shame in it. There's none, none at all. And I am so impressed with her, how Selena has covered her entire postpartum journey. But in particular, having the, the guts to say this so publicly and, and know that there are going to be some people that judge her like they, yeah. they just will. But most of us are applauding her and most of us say thank you for being such a positive influence um, and and showing reminding all of us that we can pivot and change goals and the rest of your life is still in front of you you can she's going to pivot to a different race she doesn't she didn't say when that one was right uh but it'll be at an appropriate time that she feels ready for and that's all that matters uh she also indicated that uh everybody who follows her classes on peloton ought to get ready because she is ready to bring it she is she is entering her major training phase at this point and she is going to kick our asses so uh love this for her and i appreciate that she did this uh i have nothing but wonderful 
wonderful warm fuzzies for Selena for doing that. So Jen Sherman started a little bit of a kerfluffle this week. Yeah, she did. Uh, So I guess that her mixtape class that she did um, the Sunday of Memorial Day weekend, she went to a concert the night before and I guess she had a few drinks and she was really feeling it uh, the next day. In fact, uh, she was tired and she was like, oh, I need to drink a glass of water. I need to stay hydrated. And uh, when some people got a hold of that information, (laughs) it turned into basically an intervention (laughs) online. It was it was kind of upsetting how people were so judgmental of her. Here's the thing. They made it sound like she was like about to throw up and that she was unprofessional and she missed cues and she couldn't do her job. It was like when Hawkeye went into surgery. Yeah. Hung over. Yeah. And Radar got all mad at him. Yeah. And it was a comment thread full of radars. And she she wasn't <laughs> like I, I took the class and that's absolutely not what was happening. She was her usual bubbly self. And yeah, she was definitely struggling. I mean. Who hasn't had a night where they've done too much the night before and they're like, also, the older you get, you go to a concert, even if you don't drink, it can be rough the next day. I know, right? How many times have we got, have we gone to a concert and not drank and the next day be like, Uh, I feel like I drank? Yes. (laughs) Lizzo concert was definitely like that for me. There was just a lot of judgment about this. So we, we want to talk about it and share our support. Now, I also want to say, I, I am not, I am not saying that, uh, people should, constantly be talking about alcohol and like showing this lifestyle like they can just go party 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 yeah. and giving it lots and lots of glamour and love i don't think that's healthy either no there's a middle ground there is a middle ground she's an adult she went to a concert the night before and she was an adult she showed up and she yeah. did her job and, and she, she still did a good when job the concert is right like uh, exactly. it's not like she just went to a bar the night before and she could have done that on a different day the concert is when the concert is exactly as the guy who schedules the concerts knows exactly um so i uh I don't know. Yeah. So that happened. Now you know about it. Yeah. Marathoner, <laughs> a.k.a. Maddie Majacomo. Yes. Will be at Zuzu's. On to, June 11th. On June 11th to celebrate Pride. Yeah. He's doing, uh, well, Maddie as Marathoner. Right. They are doing a uh, a really cool Pride brunch. Uh, I think this is really fun. It's going to be from uh, 3 to 5 p.m. And there's going to be like this three course family style lunch up to two cocktails, mocktails, uh, and you get to have a conversation with Marathoner. I mean, who wouldn't want to (laughs) have an in-depth conversation with Marathoner? What a special, special event to be invited to. Uh, People received invites for this in their email, and uh, last I heard, there were a few left. So hopefully people that had gotten these, they like snapped them up right away because what an amazing opportunity. You know I love Maddie. Absolutely. Emma Lovewell is heading to the UCK. <laughs> yes, I love this. I guess they're just on an exchange program now because Bradley Rose was just here. <laughs> so Emma is going There's to just London. just a shuttle going yeah. back and forth. <laughs> they're just, they, they took, they have like, they're taking Concords, repurposing them, and now they're just Peloton shuttles. Yes. Um, you know how the, that leave a penny, take a penny yeah. thing they have like at the local gas and stuff? Yeah. They have that, but for Peloton instructors. <laughs> Take a Bradley Rose, yeah. leave you need an a Emma Bradley Rose. Take it. Oh, do you got an Emma Love? Well, leave it right here. <laughs> well, she's going to be teaching uh, two classes while she's in London, and one of them is going to have instructor, or excuse me, have members in it. It's going to be a '90s ride, and she's going to be teaching that on June 8th at 7:30 p.m. So, how fun is that? I love it. Speaking of Emma, she was on the Breaking Bread podcast, which uh, I guess is everywhere, but we have it on YouTube. Yeah, and she talked all about like her, a lot of personal life stuff, not just Peloton stuff. So this was a fun one to listen to. Breaking Bread with Tom. Well, yeah. <laughs> not me. Not you. I don't break bread. <laughs> I am very careful with my bread. You keep it safe. Yes. Safe bread. And finally, in our Emma trilogy, <laughs> uh, she is going to be at... Martha's Vineyard this week for this, or summer. this summer for <laughs> Summer Stock Sound Fest. Yeah, they're doing a whole bunch of stuff with a lot of different like musical artists, but they also have speakers. And so she is one of. Well, if the you're going to have music, you got to have speakers, honey. How are people going to. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. We think it through. I'll be honest. It kind of made it sound like she was one of the musicians. Now, I know Emma's <laughs> dad is a musician, right? but I didn't know she was a musician. So I was a little confused. Gotcha. Um, I assume she's just speaking, but I could be wrong. I don't live on Cape Cod, in case you didn't know. Yes, but uh, if you're in the Cape Cod area, if you're just cruising by Martha's Vineyard, as 
one is apt to do, Mm -hmm. you can take part in that. Yeah. Toon Day learned to snorkel. Yeah, I love this. Uh, She said, be kind in the comments. Uh, I just thought this was great because, you know, I constantly think of these instructors as like so like above me athletically and and she feels insecure about her learning how to be comfortable in the water yeah uh and i i, I mean how real is that i love it's it very real for me because you know i can't I, do. I can't snorkel i know I, it freaks me out even with the big old full-on face thing like she has like it freaks me out it is so claustrophobic for me and it's freeing for me yeah. i'm like let me go like yeah. i love it i nah. love it so much i mean i got zero interest ah like, god I loved when we got to snorkel in. Uh, well, well, when we I got, didn't get to snorkel. When I got to snorkel in St. Martin, someday I'll get to edit those videos and show you guys. I got to uh, see this giant eel underwater, um, and it scared the crap out of me. And I didn't have my camera going at that moment, and I was really annoyed. <laughs> anyway, congrats to Tune Day. <laughs> yes. So you go snorkel. I'll sit on the beach and read my book. <laughs> Camilla Ram- Ramon was on Ola TV. Yeah. Or, so Ola she said TV toe two two. Oh, it didn't. Ola TV. It didn't break two. it apart. Like there's no space in between Ola TV and the word two. Yeah, and because uh, we had to translate it, so Google got all weird. It did. Anyway, she was there, but it says that she was returning. I think that's important to note. I didn't know she had been on Ola TV before. Yeah. So we must have missed that. But uh, she she wanted to do um, an interview where she talked about uh, changing the dialogue in the Latino community about training to one that focuses on eliminating guilt and as- an aesthetic pressure generating freedom and happiness so i think that's smart and uh, i really like that she shared this ali love will be speaking at the day to grow conference in orlando on august 14th awesome it's one of those multi-speaker motivational things so if that's your jam get your tickets yeah it's interesting that they call her the ceo of love squad global peloton instructor it's just a peloton instructor yeah, like, I, I mean, don't know. They're all technically global. Right? Yeah. Isn't that a weird word to add in there? It is an odd thing to throw in there. I wonder if Peloton did that. The things that make me go, hmm. <laughs> and coming up after this, we're going to talk to Angelo. Uh, we have a listener wanting to know if menopause can affect your diet, and he's got answers. <laughs> yeah, he does. Joining us once again via the magic of ZoomTube is Angelo from MetPro here to answer all of your fitness and nutrition questions. Hello. Hi. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me back. Well, thank you for being back. Uh, this is going to be, I think, a tough question. I'm really curious to see how you handle it. So. Where were you on the night of June 19th, <laughs> 1976? <laughs> I had a nickel for every time I heard that. (laughs) So Karen Smith reached out and she wants to know how she knows if menopause is affecting her diet. Specifically, she says her eating habits haven't really changed, but she's always tired and her weight is creeping up. She's had routine blood work done. Uh, about a, a few months ago and no real changes were noted. She's 45 and she has no idea if she's into the change. Well, I'm going to say she's got to at least be in perimenopause because that is that's my feeling. But your turn. I'll let you answer. <laughs> so I'm going to give you an answer that will have the ring of truth. It is going to be very simple and it is going to be a very aggravating answer. Mm. Karen, you don't need to wonder. It is. <laughs> There it is. That's Boy, pretty- the, the one time you don't say it depends. <laughs> yeah. It depends. Yeah. This is just the deal. If yeah. you're a female and you're 45, it's coming. And here's the thing, though, that most people don't realize. It's not a switch. It's a dial. So the way hormones work is you can graduate into it. Now, some people do have that you know, switch effect, but most people will start feeling those effects It can even start earlier. It can even start in your early 40s for some women gradually. And so a way that you'll know that is if randomly you're starting to experience not much has changed, but you're feeling these effects and you can't pinpoint it to something else. Now, there are other things, Karen, that could make you fatigued, tired and things you should check on. And I'll give you just a list of a few common offenders. But assuming there's no other things out of whack, Yes, your hormones can be having an impact. That doesn't mean all is lost. I promise. 
It just means that you do want to optimize what you can for your wellness, for your health, for your fitness, your nutrition, all across the board as naturally as you can, of course. So, Karen, the things that I would like you to ask your doctor about, again, I'm not a doctor, but here are things you can ask your doctor about. Um, iron levels. If if your iron is low, especially, and you might check, because um, that could be more dominant around your cycle each month. See if your iron levels are low. That's a real common one. Check on your D vitamin. Um, I'm confident if you've been to the doctor within the last decade, they've probably already alerted you to these things. The next thing you want to make sure is that there aren't obvious gaps. If somebody is confessing elusive energy issues um, where it's a little unpredictable. What can happen is as we age, your body changes a little bit and you might benefit from a little bit more frequent meals. That doesn't necessarily mean overhauling your macronutrient ratios or your calories, but you may just be at a point in your life where you're a little more susceptible to gaps where you get busy. Maybe you had a light breakfast and then pretty soon it's one, two o'clock, you get hungry. So you eat your normal lunch but then you're still fatigued after that. Well, you might not be realizing that that earlier gap is adding up. I see this a lot with my athletes, especially athletes who are training for some sort of competition or even endurance athletes, peloton cyclists, whatever it may be. They're training for something um, and they're getting technically adequate calories and macros based on what they've done before. They're coming to me expressing, ah, oh, I'm just, I'm still fatigued. My energy isn't where I should be. My performance isn't where it should be. How do I improve that without adding a ton of calories? Remember this, calories you have not yet consumed can't help you. So Americans tend to consume about 70% of their calories in the last 30% of their day generally. So what happens is if you switch and get a little bit more of your fuel earlier in the day, that can help. If you spread those calories out over a, a few snacks, that can help even further. But you may be getting enough fuel, but it may be too little too late in the day, especially if you are pushing yourself and you're exercising or training for something. So those are a few little things you want to look for. Of course, speak with your doctor about blood work and a panel just to make sure nothing wonky is going on with your hormones. But like you said, it is entirely possible to feel the influence of shifting hormones as we march through our 40s without there being a major issue or something wrong. You want to make sure your macronutrients are balanced. So there's a lot of approaches out there and there is science behind things like low carb. There is science behind, you know, intermittent fasting. There is science behind a lot of different approaches, but approaches that aren't balanced tend to be exposed whenever we are dealing with something like hormonal shifts. What I will typically notice is the strategies that someone may have tolerated in their 30s in their 40s, mid 40s, their body just doesn't like it as much. Now, that's not across the board, but that could be the case, something worth, con worth considering. Whereas I rarely see people struggle with a balanced approach where they're getting adequate a balance between carbs, good, slow digesting, complex carbs with quality proteins, with spread out fats throughout the day and lots of vegetables for fiber. When I see things like that, rarely is that leading to energy crashes. So those are the common um, red flags we look for. And one last thing I'll suggest is when we do our an initial evaluation with someone, you know, one of the first things we ask is, how's your energy? And what time of the day are you finding energy dips? Because spoiler, Everyone comes to me and says, yeah, my energy is just, I have this issue, especially early afternoon. And by then it's so hard to catch up with our clients typically, and we really take each individual scenario and, and previous health history into account. But typically we want to see somebody eating four or five times a day 
right out of the gate. Even if we are going to put them on fewer meals a day, we like to start there, especially if energy is one of their principal complaints, because that often fixes the problem just organically. A lot of times people have inconsistent meal timing. So make sure you're at least getting breakfast, make sure lunch isn't too late in the day, make sure you have a mid afternoon snack. And those few things can make a big, big difference. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for all of that. It's very helpful. And uh, if people would like this sort of stuff just for them, where can they find you? We'd love to visit with you if you go to metpro.co slash TCO. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Checking out the competition. Echelon is attempting to target disgruntled Peloton members. Yeah, apparently they think that uh, people are looking for reasons to downgrade. <laughs> people are like, you know what I really don't like about Peloton? I wish my bike was here. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, I, I know there's a lot of people that use Echelon bikes yeah. out there. And, and if that's what you can afford and you like it, you go right ahead and use it. My and, issue is with the company ripping Peloton off at yeah, every Yeah, we turn. should say, because I feel like we haven't talked about Peloton in a while. So if somebody Echelon has, in a while. I'm sorry, Echelon in a while. Obviously, we've talked about Peloton. <laughs> uh, and so if somebody has an Echelon bike and, and they're now disgruntled with us, <laughs> like our frustration with Echelon over the years is that their attempts to emulate Peloton have bordered on trademark infringement and bordered and yeah well didn't they lose a suit yeah, about something so, so uh so that's our frustration with echelon not so. that you have an echelon not bike that you have an echelon. not that you don't have a peloton right. bike just want yeah, to be clear about that so but uh but so yeah they're they're running a uh, a trade in your bike program yeah so they expect you to train in your Peloton and then they'll give you a rebate of a thousand dollars. So basically one of their bikes for free. What's interesting about this is that SoulCycle already tried this and it failed miserably. Miserably. Didn't they say they got like six bikes or something? Yeah, it was it, like it was I mean I it was like I'm pretty sure it was under ten. Yeah. It was it was, it was bad. It was bad. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just interesting. I think with Echelon's, I, here's their business model. They're like, you know what? We've been stealing good ideas and it hasn't been working. What if we stole the bad ideas? I just thought it was funny that not only do they steal all the ideas from Peloton, then they steal the idea to to, to try to get business right. from Peloton by stealing SoulCycle's idea yes. to take over Peloton. Just craziness. Craziness. Other connected fitness. If you dig your Strava... They, I guess, had what a, a team chat recently where they had tips for optimizing your Peloton bike experience. Yeah. And, and basically, there's a lot of people that may not even know this. You can link your Peloton bike with your Strava account. Back in the day, it was all the rage. It's all we did. <laughs> um, and uh, one of the cool things that they are able to do now is use your FTP to look at the power analysis that comes out of Strava. So you can combine the two pieces of information together to get more data to be able to see how you're improving over time in your statistics so you can take the ftp test on your peloton bike and then you enter that number into your strava profile that's a big deal people because they never used to do that you always used to have to get a third party um cadence and uh no i'm sorry a power meter that was the only way to do it. Ah. So this is a big deal. <laughs> this gotcha. is a very big deal. <laughs> uh, you also could you could guesstimate your FTP. Uh, I think they did have that, but now you can use it straight from your Peloton. Awesome. CNET. We mentioned them earlier, but they had an article this week about AI and fitness and how it's affecting people's workouts. Yeah, it's interesting because I am hearing a lot about these things. I'm hearing about this in so many places. I hear about this at MetPro because the different uh, coaches, they discuss how they uh, use AI if they have questions that they get over and over from people to kind of formulate their own response. Mm -hmm. And then I also hear about things like Aptiv and the, Aptiv is rolling out and basically an entire technology all of their classes are based on ai instructors they have like a whole thing uh so you go into your aptive app and you've been seeing instructors and now all of a sudden you have an ai instructor and it's a little robot voice and it's like <laughs> totally different people are freaking out about it so it's taking over all these different areas of fitness it's happening everywhere so 
I think it's just absolutely fascinating. One other thing, they yeah. also talk about the AI that occurs like in tonal and how it uses algorithms to come to like figure out the weight that you should be using. And then you have the AI that's in the guide and you have the AI that's in the gaming and all the Peloton gaming and that kind of thing. So there's a lot of AI that's happening in fitness that's not a robot taking over. I just want to be clear about that. Yeah. So like a lot of times you're using AI and you might not even realize. Mm hmm. Yeah, this is what I was just talking about, about the Aptiv. Okay. So basically, like I said, they rolled out this new app and they didn't tell anybody that it was coming. Oh. Like they, everybody's just rolling along in their app and then all of a sudden people are, get this download forced on them that's like, okay, here's an update. And they open up the update and it's like, and now you're using a robot for now your you training robot. plans. And they got U, a U2 album. <laughs> so they said, <laughs> they Aptiv did, did respond and say that like next week things are going to be explained better, but people were very upset that they <laughs> (laughs) have to wait till next week to understand why all this has happened so it sounds like a lot of massive confusion over there Uh, I find that fascinating that is a new one we were replacing all of our coaches with AI yeah okay good luck with your PR nightmare yeah and we have a new digital platform for fitness right so Not really. Obey has been around a while, but what's different about it is now it's personalized. And this is another way of using AI. So this whole conversation is very well, (laughs) well rounded. It's so what they do is they figure out like, okay, this kind of person they go through and they answer all these questions. Mm -hmm. And the person who wants to sign up, they what they get all this information to say, this is what kind of person I am. This is how I exercise. This is what I like to do. This is the kind of workouts I like to do. So then their AI over at Obey looks at all their different workouts and then it puts together Together, personalized programs for that person. Gotcha. Uh, now, this was interesting because they actually quote Barry McCarthy in this article. It was a very old article from last year, uh, an old quote rather from last year, where he had said that the one thing that you will see people changing the most over the next year at Peloton is personalization. So the person who wrote this article wondered, are we going to see this type of thing for Peloton? I have no idea, but they are doing a lot of gaming. They are doing a lot of AI. They are doing a lot of personalization. Now, my understanding from what Barry has always said is that personalization is more about how Netflix personalizes like, oh, based on what you're doing, this is what you would like to see more of. But could it be something like this? I don't know. Will they put together programs based on what you've done in the past? Wouldn't that be fabulous? I mean, it seems like... Peloton definitely needs more programs. It seems like the logical evolution. It does. Speaking of logical evolution... Lululemon announces trail team and female driven science initiative with further... Yeah. So basically, they're doing a bunch of scientific studies. Lululemon is giving money to finance all of these scientific studies being done about the female athlete. And uh, they are going to be looking into a whole bunch of different insights. Uh, There are a bunch of female athletes that are going to be looking, working really hard over the next nine months with the goal of a collective six day ultra running experience in the spring of 2024. And uh, it's going to be supported by science all the way and they have a goal of breaking world records as they do it so i am actually really interested in this i want to see how this goes in case you missed it obviously memorial day already occurred but the classes that they put out are still out there and waiting for you yeah they all dropped uh on may 29th uh and there were several of them i I don't know how many i can't remember now but it was several classes that they dropped that were all on demand so that even though the studios were going to be closed that you could still enjoy sweating with your favorite instructors clip out helper b darcy I'm sure Darcy will love that title. (laughs) (laughs) Put together a Peloton gym pros and cons for people wondering uh, if it's worth their time. Yeah. So she took a couple of the classes and she went through uh, point by point to see like, hey, what are what are the best experiences? So uh, she had some she had some cons that she put out there that are just like it's not the best to use. Like, let me say she she get a caveat that she used it on her phone. So it's possible this experience might be different, but I don't think it is because the this this is only exists on the app right now so i don't think so but here's the thing that is a, a con to me and that is some of the classes require equipment we haven't seen before from peloton so weight benches barbells in fact i even saw like a pull-ups being done like a pull-up bar right uh not everybody has those things yeah um, well wouldn't this only be available on the app because the idea is you take it with you to the gym that's, so that's what i was saying it would be 
what well, you said so far. So oh, well, I, who knows? They could change it. But it seems <laughs> it would seem kind of counterproductive for it to be on your bike because you're not going to take your bike with you to the gym. Precisely. Presumably. Sure, you could have a super advanced home gym, but you probably also got an iPhone at that point. Yes, yeah. definitely. So my point being that whenever you have all this equipment they're asking for, if you're trying to use your home gym, that may not work because they're asking for things to be used that you might only be gotcha. able to get in an actual yeah. gym. You'd have to have a pretty advanced home gym to have some of the equipment at the ready. Exactly. Now, um, she also went through the pros, and the biggest one in her fav- in her opinion is that you can follow the expert programming without having to be on screen with an instructor. Because there are so many people that don't have the time or the ability or the just, I just want to get my workout done. I don't want to listen well, to something. Well, and how many times do you see people say, like, being snarky like can we shut the instructors up yeah well now you can yeah uh (laughs) but the interface is incredibly easy to use it's credibly incredibly intuitive uh and the navigate the navigation is as well so uh thank you so much darcy apparently you're a helper bee and uh, you put together this great article and uh i in the not too distant future we will have a full review coming up we sure will keep an eye out for that yep Three new Peloton programs showed up in the app recently. Yes, uh, two of them were specific for the row uh, community. So there's a you can row. I think actually that might have been available to everybody beforehand, but that had a rower. But now people who are on the app can access that. Gotcha. So that's new to people who are on the app. And then there is a brand new one called Perfect Your Pace Targets. Now they've had this for the bike and they've had it for the running and now they have pace targets for the rowing. So that is really cool. Uh, and then a self-care retreat. This is a really interesting one because it is totally different than anything they've done. It includes meditation, yoga, and other classes that are all about helping you de-stress and relax. Nice one week of of classes all taught by Anna. Love it. So fun that they're still putting out this new content. Absolutely. And Pump Up the Volume Strength program is now available on all Peloton platforms. Yes, this is one of the gl- the guide exclusive programs and now enough time has passed so that you can get it. Now if you'd had a Peloton guide, you would have been able to have it instantly, but if you're not, now you can get it everywhere. And a reminder uh, before we close out that live classes are on hiatus this week, so don't lose your shit. Yeah. And uh, Nikki put together, one of our other helper bees apparently, yes. Nikki Smith, uh, she put together this really cool article that uh, she has a whole bunch of where all the instructors have been this week. So if you're missing all of your instructors, you can follow along and see where everybody has gotten off to because they are all literally all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> Peloton birthdays. And finally, uh, we've got one birthday this week. It's Cody Rigsby. I think you've heard of him. Huh. And his birthday is coming up on June 8th. Happy birthday, Cody. Happy birthday. And coming up after this, we're going to talk to Melissa Ferrara. Ferrara. And you probably know her better as Moms of Peloton. So if you ever wonder how that came to be or what goes on behind the scenes, stick around because we're going to let you find out. Checking in with the Peloton community. Joining us today via the magic of ZoomTube is Melissa Ferrara, but you probably know her better as Moms of Peloton. So congratulations on being plural. <laughs> Why, thank you. Or possessive. Oh, or possessive in plural. Possessive in plural. We're, we're doing both. We're right. doing both. It could be both. <laughs> it could totally be both. All right. Thank so you I'm, for having me here. Well, thank you for being here. And uh, I, I know that you've probably answered this a billion times, but I love to go back in time and find out like how people originally got into Peloton, like how it popped up on your radar and you decided, ooh, I need to get one of those. Oh my gosh. Yes. I, I love this question because as OGs, I think we, we thrive with this, right? It's like such pride. Um, so I actually worked a block away from the Peloton studios. So unlike most people that bought the bike and they live across the country and, or, you know, wherever I started at the studio. So 2015, I walked by, I was like, oh, this looks good. And I was a huge fitness person and I always dabbled with different classes all over the city. And I walked in and I was like, let me, let me give this a shot. And my first class was Robin and I was hooked ever since, but I I worked a block away. It's perfect. I kind of hate you a little bit for that. (laughs) A little bit, just a little. (laughs) I know, I know. Well, it's weird because I was a studio writer for so many years 
And I didn't get my bike until 2019. Oh, my God. You did studio I, only for that long? Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Because my apartment, I didn't think I could fit it in the apartment. And sure. as we know now, I mean, it literally takes up four feet of space. So I always rode in the studio. And then I got a surprise of a lifetime for my husband in 2019. Aww. And yeah, so I was a studio rider first. And then I got the bike. So when you got the bike... Uh, well, first of all, congratulations on getting the bike before the pandemic. Yes, well done. <laughs> well done on your husband's part. Yes. Was this a birthday present, Christmas? Yes, this was, it's so funny because, so my birthday is two days before Christmas. Okay. And then Christmas, we celebrate Christmas. And then my anniversary is um, New Year's Eve. Oh, wow. So my husband was like, you know what? And I planned our wedding. I'm, I'm an event planner and our wedding was like the Super Bowl. It was out of control. And I love you, Anthony, but he really did not much besides give me the names of who he needed. So he was like, well, well, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang <laughs> on. Time out, Green Bay. Flag on the play. You're an event planner. You're planning your own wedding. I think we all know the yeah. last thing you want is that man's input. <laughs> Like this is what but like this is her sweet sixteen. And then I had to stop myself and I kept calling it my wedding. And I feel terrible saying that. I was like, I love you, it's your wedding too. So Tom, you are correct. I did not want any part of it, but I wanted something for it. I was like, I really want something for all the work, you know? It's like a push present. It was like a it was like my push present for my wedding. I needed I needed some thanks. Okay. So, it's that's, also that's fair. That's fair. Also, hopefully you would put it out there in the ether that you wanted the one because nineteen is but that's when, when the big commercial that's when the big commercial happened and so to on the heels of that of all the controversy to turn around and go you know what i will buy my wife a peloton that's yeah, a little ballsy she on his does part. need to keep it tight well you make a valid point john foley right i mean i'm sorry i still like the commercial i know it's hard I so much. i'm like I actually love the commercial, love the marketing between behind it. I'm like, these people get way too crazy with cancel culture and oh. craziness. <laughs> Amen. Um, but yeah, so it was a, I guess, trifecta present and totally took me for a loop. I, I have the um, video on my on my feed and I'm like crying. I'm, I thought it was a, a water bottle. He gave me the, I guess, the production case that they give you when you get the bike and got the water bottle. And I'm like, it's so nice. And I'm like, what am I going to do with this water bottle? I have a million of these water bottles. And then he's like, so you're getting the bike. And I'm like, you know, it was just the best. It's just the best. It's the best. If you've ever been surprised for a bike, it's the best. Yeah, and it's the best too. Like when, like you think it's going to be a bad present, and then, and then it is you're up like being a water bottle. I'm trying not to look like a bitch, but what are you thinking? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. So that was like, I, like there will be no better present. Like I don't, I, I'm sorry. Like even jewelry, I'm like I don't really care. But Peloton <laughs> and Pelotoners and people in the studio, they know. Like getting a bike for in your city apartment is like. The end all be all. It was amazing. Yeah. So so now you said you dabbled a lot before Peloton. Are you like all in on the Peloton now? Are you still cheating or what's that <laughs> looking like? <laughs> so I, I know, right? I, and I'm tempted because there's a few cool studios in New York that have just opened. Um, but no, I'm all Peloton. I really am. I, I, I wish that I ventured out a little bit because it is so you know, concentrated and cult like, but I just can't do it. I, I feel bad. I, I do. I feel like I'm cheating. And it's also like I have a daughter. So for me, like this morning, I jumped on an hour and she's running around. My husband's there. Like it's just convenient. Yeah. And I would love to try something new. Like there's a new, what's it called? I think it's like above something in New York and they it's like this climbing um machine that's like a stairmaster but it you know you pull down on it is that the one that Jay-Z bought with did Jay-Z buy a called, stair that a climbing was called thing? climber okay. that was called climber climber yeah okay so it's a climber but it's like in a club vibe and I have no idea how long I would last on it to be honest because that just sounds like like it does climbing for 30 minutes <laughs> that sounds but awful someone told yeah, it sounds awful yeah, but it sounds, sounds like a great ass burner and like what I what I kind of I need to switch it up a little bit so to answer your question no I've not cheated from Peloton I'm a loyal uh wife to Peloton so <laughs> no but I should but no <laughs> yes. she wishes she had sewed her oats a little bit before she settled down but she is not currently looking for 
pillow polyamory. I mean, pillow amory. Like, <laughs> exactly. And New York is only so big. I mean, it's big, but the fitness world is kind of small. Yeah. So I, I can't, you know, you'd, you'd I can't get be, found out. You would. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They would come after me. I mean, my DMs are already insane. They'd be like, "Really? You know, people people are intense." So I I gotta, I gotta, Amen, girl. Yeah. We, you Amen. don't gotta tell us. <laughs> As I say, I'm like my DMs. It goes from like, "How do I get a studio ride?" to, "Oh my god, this instructor cursed during this ride." to who's Cody dating this week? I'm like, guys, I'm like, give me a, give me a second here. That's the last thing I need on top of all of that. <laughs> Don't you know everything right now? And, I love that you people. Need to, you need to tell me this super deep secret. That nobody else knows. Like, and, there was like tell me stranger. more. Tell me more details about this. Yeah. Who are you? Like, you're brand new to me. Uh, yeah, that's it's so funny. funny. It is. Well, so. You guys. So you're kind of alluding to Moms of Peloton on IG, people who already know they're listening. But like for people who don't know, tell us exactly how that got started. Like what made you decide, oh, this would be fun. (laughs) Yeah. So I like I mentioned, I'm an event planner. And because of COVID, obviously, in New York and everywhere else, they weren't we weren't having events. And my brain just felt like it took like a halt. My creative sure. brain shut down. And I was like, I need something. And I need something to do on my couch. I, I just had my daughter in October 2020. Thought to myself, what can I do that's just easy and fun and whatever? And my love for Peloton, I was always making jokes about it. And I loved memes. And I loved the community. I was in a bunch of Facebook groups. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make an Instagram. And I really don't care if it's just me doing it. It's something to give my creative outlet somewhere to live and breathe on the on the internet. So I created Moms of Peloton. And initially, it was really more so geared towards memes for moms, right? I started and I had, I don't know, like 10 followers, which were my sister-in-law, my brother, like, you know, like it was just family, my dad. Um, and they were like, you know, this is funny. And then I created a just like a, a real impersonating Moira Rose from Schitt's Creek. And I think that kind of got, you know, a little bit viral and picked up. And then I gained some more traction. And I realized that it wasn't just moms. It was people in the community, men, women, pet owners, whoever. And then it kind of just grew into what it is now, which is awesome and fun. I love it. Yeah. So before you found Peloton, what all were you doing? Or did you do much or was that your first foray? No, I was doing everything. I was I was an Orange Theory girl. I was doing um, a ton of flywheel. That was like my thing. I would go flywheel, Peloton, flywheel, Peloton. I was going back and forth to the studios because flywheel was on 21st Street and Peloton was on 23rd and I was on 22nd. So I'd be like, <laughs> let me try over there, flywheel. And it was just like totally different vibes um, for the studios. And then what else was I doing? Oh, a ton of bar classes. Literally like... Everything that Peloton has on the app, I was doing in smaller capacities all over New York City. And then they consolidated it and you were like, no more. (laughs) I know. And once the bar came, I was like, you guys really got me by the balls. I'm like, I am (laughs) stuck here. (laughs) By the bar. (laughs) Exactly. I'm like, I am so stuck. And then they did the dance cardio, which I was taking at classes 305 in the city. So I'm like, they just knew. And then they did the the kickboxing, the cardio kickboxing with Kendall and Brad. So I definitely had fitness ADD and Peloton now has fitness ADD and we're just, like I said, a happy marriage, happy wife, happy life. So when it comes to your IG, what kind of stuff do you post now? Like when you're, are you sticking mostly with your memes? Are you doing videos? Are you doing a combination? How do you, and how do you come up with content for it? That's a great question. So I, yeah, I mean, I stick with the memes, but I feel like the memes prompt a conversation and they prompt the community. It's not just like people tagging their friends on the memes. They're answering questions. They're responding with opinions and their voice and whatnot. So it's memes plus some fun reels, but it's always 
creating a conversation and getting the community to be engaged. Um, I do host challenges once a month. So today I have a challenge actually going on right now, which is fun. So I will add in some fitness elements to it and then I'll go live. So if I go to the studio, I'm creating, you know, content for people to see what it's like to be at an event. Emma just had her book signing. So I'm like, you guys know I'm going live for all of y'all in California and England, Australia, all over the world to kind of get that, that insider glimpse. So it's kind of like a little bit all over the place, but a fun spot for Peloton lovers for sure. So what was the turnout there like? I'm just curious for oh, her, Emma, yeah, for Emma her book, book yeah. uh, signing. Yeah. It was huge. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely a very cool venue. It was large. Um, I would say the balcony wasn't totally full, but the the floor was was filled, and two rows of it were Peloton instructors. So I know I saw you guys at Logan's fashion show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah, it was a similar crowd to that. So I think it was about maybe like fifteen instructors. There was more at Emma's Emma's book signing, but. Alex to Daddy Morton to Hannah Corbin. Of course, Cody was the moderator. Right. He is fantastic. Um, All of the, I mean, everybody actually, most of them besides Rebecca Kennedy, because she was in Paris, I believe, but they all got on stage and people go crazy. I mean, look, it's like they're celebrities and they're, and they're pillow celebrities. They love it. The audience loves it. Everyone was getting excited. And when they, entered the theater everyone was clapping and excited so it was a it was a good time yeah it's the new level of celebrity that our culture seems to have which is interesting i think probably ultimately healthier for people because like you're a big deal to a a very small subset of people and so like you can still go out in the world like right if you're tom hanks and you go to disney world you're going to get swarmed but if you're you know hannah corbin and you go to disney world a couple people might be like oh hey i know you but, but you can w- also go to a place that's peloton related and you'll be you will star. be swarmed yeah. yeah it's like you get that best of both worlds yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i definitely think there's a few that are a little bit more so like cody For sure. yeah I, yeah yeah like i do think with cody it, it's gotten to be extensive for yeah. him but yeah for Someone like Hannah Corbin, Callie, they can walk on the streets and and feel comfortable, I would think. Um, I hope they feel comfortable. I know a few instructors have some issues with safety, which is a shame because there's some weirdos out there. But um, but yeah, I think that's the best of both worlds. They don't have to feel like, you know, I don't know, like Tom Hanks, like you said. Right. Yeah. 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 That would be a a tough road to walk. It would. I yeah, I just planned um, a event for an event for Tom Hanks, actually, for a man called Otto. I was doing his his um, huge release for it in New York. And same thing. It's like their security detail is so intense and it's extensive. And I just I just want to walk sa- outside my house and a uh, hat and feel comfortable. And I can't even imagine what they go through. So the Peloton instructors, that's why I said before, I was like, to to the mom's peloton crew i said there will be instructors there trust me because they like it too they like to feel that energy right to get that praise i mean who wouldn't so i said i was like they will be there don't don't be alarmed like they will be there trust me and they're really good about supporting each other's things they, are. they show up at each other's stuff all the time it's so sweet and i love the fact that they moderate for each other and that's what made emma's book really so great because cody has known her since they were dancers before they made the hundreds of thousands that they are right now. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I think there's like some nostalgic sweetness to it. And they remember when they weren't famous before the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Um, because there was, I mean, I remember being in classes prior to the pandemic where there would be empty seats in Cody's classes. Yeah. And I would be front row for Alex's classes every single ride. And, you know, they were just regular fitness instructors. So it's, interesting to see how it's evolved for sure especially since like if you want to be a celebrity or famous fitness instructor is not the path people would recommend right right it's it's acting it's it's being in a band something like that but like people didn't become fitness instructors so they could become celebrities like that there's that there was just not a that was not a path when they started (laughs) out it's so it's so weird to think about and e- even still i'm like this is so strange like they're teaching 
but they're but people are obsessed with it. And I think that Instagram has really elevated that Absolutely. because they're seeing behind the scenes. They're right. seeing um, Jess King's house renovation and she has a baby now and Emma's redoing her house in two days, like killing it, speaking engagements all over. And her life is so fun with the Nike sponsorship. So it's like kind of like reality stars, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, yeah. they, they need their own reality show because each of them has their own path that they're taking. And it's all so interesting to, to the outsiders. Yeah. Uh, do, do you ever, I mean, I know you interact with them quite a bit. So do you ever get a sense that that I, I've heard people say this before, they worry that some of those instructors who are like super, super famous, like a Cody, that, you know, maybe they might like get either overexposed or just outgrow Peloton and, and move on. Do you ever do you ever hear that? Do you ever get that sense? Oh, yes. Oh, the DMs. Back to the DMs. <laughs> <laughs> this is a constant question. And it's always about the same three instructors. It's like. Tune Day, Robin, and Cody. Cody is the number one. I always, this is my response. They're not going to go anywhere. Peloton is going to continue to pay them to even just show up for a half an hour in a month and they'll get paid X amount of dollars. And that X amount is quite large, I'm sure. I don't know the number. So they're not going to go anywhere. Why would he? Because it's like, okay, you do a half an hour class once a week, you're done, you get paid and you still get that exposure. I do not think they would go anywhere. It's not that Peloton- yeah, it's not that time consuming for them. The, the, what I would compare it to, and this is going to be a weird comparison, yeah, <laughs> uh, is professional wrestling, right? Like it's like those guys go off, and it's mostly guys. Those guys that do this, those guys go off and they make their movies, but they still, but when they got a movie to push, they still come back. And because they know that there's a core fan base there and they want to drive them to the box office on opening day. And so they, they still come back. You still see John Cena on there. You still see The Rock show up and 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 wrestle sometimes. And I think it would they would follow a, a business model like that if Cody was just like absolutely like I've got to go do this other thing. I my my gut tells me that, yeah, they're going to leave the door open so he can kind of come and go oh, yeah. as it will. Yeah. And it's interesting because Peloton supports their endeavors. Yeah. Right. Like, like, and that, I, I don't know, like on a legal standpoint, like how that's working and how they're navigating that. But Peloton encourages them to do this. So I don't know if they get a percentage of sales for something or, or what it is, but it's, it's very interesting to me. But yeah, I, I don't see them going anywhere. And frankly, I think it's smart for them not to go anywhere. Yeah. Because it's there's been a wide. few instructors. That have yeah. left and you don't hear about them. Yep. You know? Yeah. yeah I you, mean, without the platform, like right now, that's the only game in town to be a celebrity fitness instructor. Yep. And other people are trying, but nobody's really been able to to replicate it yet. Not on that scale. And my guess no. is with the sponsorships, I, I doubt that Peloton gets a cut. But I think the advantage to Peloton is, one, it's a lot of unearned media for their instructors. And... Yeah they don't have to pay them as much, Mm -hmm. right? Like, not that they don't get paid well, like, you know, don't cry for them, Argentina. Right. But, uh, (laughs) but, but they're doing okay. But at the same time, (laughs) if, if, (laughs) if Robin has a deal with Adidas or whoever she has a deal with and, the, and Peloton said, no, you can't do that. Well, the first words out of Robin's mouth are going to be, well, then you need to pay me what Adidas would have paid me. Yeah. And That's so, a great point, Tom, yeah. Yeah. you know, well, so. and it's it also works together. It's synchronous, right? Because yeah. if if Robin goes out and she has her deal with Adidas and she's all over TV and she's all over all these ads, right, that just brings more recognition to Peloton. Yeah. So I, I definitely I agree with you 100 percent. They're not going anywhere. That is always my sense. But I just like to hear other people's thoughts on it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that people do think, oh, like Cody would, um, you know, do live TV. I love Cody and I saw Cody on Dancing with the Stars. I don't know that live TV is the spot for him. I think that I was surprised. I thought he would. And, and again, the Cody people are going to freaking come after me for this one. They're going to come after me. Don't at me, <laughs> at her. <laughs> I, I think he's most comfortable in the saddle. And that's where his jokes are coming. And maybe, a, you know, when he gains experience, he would do something like a talk show. But I think that talk show would be more tuned in. 
Yeah. Way more yeah. like in the tune day favor. If I was a producer, I'd be, I would say tune day for that for sure. But I think that Cody is fun in these other little elements and he's been doing some, um, food reviews and restaurant reviews. And I like that for him. I think that's perfect for him. You know, I don't necessarily know that interviewing would be something up his alley, but if he w- were to get something, and I said before, Food Network, pick him up, do all New York City reviews or fly him all over wherever he's going. He's fun and he's in his element when he's just him, yeah. not interviewing. Yeah, no, um, I, I absolutely agree with that. And I agree with what you said about Toon Day. Like that I could see turning into a talk show thing because I feel like, now my turn to get added. I feel like yeah. uh, whenever she did um, the the podcast for Fit, Peloton, Fitness, Fitness Flipped. Flipped, she really, they scripted it too much. Yeah, they took I all agree. the tune day out of it. Mm-hmm. They made it so, so formulaic that they just took all of her personality and squashed it. And she's got so much. And like, let her go. She's perfect the way she is. Don't hold that back. And so I think in another place where she was just allowed to do whatever, she would really shine in that way. Totally, totally agree with you. Yeah, it's interesting to see where we could place them and 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 Robin too. I mean, Robin's masterclass. I don't know if you guys took the masterclass um, with that app, but I had the app, and then I saw that Robin had her masterclass course. She killed it, but it was perfect for her because she's so motivating and she's just intense and just like, yes, you can do it and that kind of thing. Whereas she's not this light and fluffy, fun, bubbly kind of person she is more like i'm gonna kick your ass i'm gonna tell you what you need to do and if you don't follow it that's on you yeah but let me tell you this is what you gotta do you know that's just her. <laughs> so it's like let them live just like you said krista let them live in these areas where they are themselves and don't pigeonhole them and create the you know the fakeness that we can see right through it so it's true as long as they're following true to their heart and their personality i think they're gonna do great yeah. Yeah. I felt like with Tunis podcast, it's like I feel like she had done a good job and then someone had edited it to within mm. an inch of its life. Yeah. And so I feel like if they had just let it play as a more normal con- conversation and you can certainly go through and tighten things up and whatnot. Of course. But but um, but it was just so like it felt like it felt almost like a trailer for another podcast instead of the mm. actual podcast. Yeah. It's yeah. I, I will say, though, and I'm sure you see this with your own content. It's it's so much easier to go back and pick things apart than it is to to do it yourself. Like there's just whenever you're putting things out there, I'm sure there were lots of thoughts about why they did what they did and how they did it. And and so it's easy for us to be like, ah, oh, why'd you do it that way? But right. Not so right. easy to to know in the moment how to do it so (laughs) totally totally agree i know and that's the thing it's like you're second guessing your content like should i put this out there should i not put this out there what's gonna have the most engagement what's not it's just and you have to try it and for her she tried it i actually didn't really listen i listened to a little bit but i'm always so crazy busy and i just started getting into podcasts myself so i'm gonna go back i hope that they still have them available because i want to they are it's still out there they're still out there yeah totally definitely take a listen for sure so having said all this do you have instructors that you gravitate more to than others yeah that's a great question i definitely do and i think it's very apparent. I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, I need to get more instructors on the page because I, I stick to with, with who I love. And it's, it's really hard for me to veer past that. They're all amazing. And everybody has their own cup of tea. And it's something that I ask frequently on my page too. I'm like, okay, so like, what instructor like are you gravitating towards? People are like, how can I even answer that question? There's so many. I'm like, I know. But you have a few right. that you love. You, you always do. do. You do. You have like three you, you click with. Everybody has at least three they click with that like really, yeah. really click. Right? Yes. Yes. And that's what I said. I made a joke. I was like, you know, the, the asking who your favorite Peloton instructor is, like asking the new, like, what's your Zodiac sign? <laughs> that's, like, that's, that's what I feel. And and my response to that was Robin is my sun sign. Maddie Majacomo is my moon sign. And Emma is my rising. And I feel like that just runs the gamut of like super intense, like I said, and then you get the Maddie in there. That's just your bestie. And like we're talking and bullying about Broadway plays and like gossip, but like in a good, fun, positive, not like bitchy gossip way. And then Emma's got the 90s playlist where you can just jam and like feel her Martha, Martha's Vineyard vibe and you know, whatnot. So it just makes like, for me, the perfect Peloton circle is, is those three. 
But not to say that I don't love Alex Toussaint. I mean, he has been my guy since, you know, the beginning at, at the studios. Um, I think his energy is totally unmatched and awesome and out of control. Like, he's just amazing. And then I like, I like, you know, I don't know. I guess I love Dennis Morton, too. I don't know. I always make jokes about him. I call him Daddy Morton. He's my thing. It's like, oh, and Adrian. Adrian's another favorite Yeah, for, for beyond uh, his fitness level. Just his looks alone give him <laughs> super credit. <laughs> but I don't know. Who, are, who do you guys gravitate towards? Well, Tom doesn't do any Peloton. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. Right. So, uh, but I, I have like different people for different moods. Um, I'd say on the bike, I tend to go toward Jen Sherman because I really, first of all, I love her group. Like the people who make up the tribe are just like really really amazing people and they're always so uplifting and accepting of, and I really yeah. like that um, so that's one and then uh, on the tread really lately I have been super like Susie Chan Bex Gentry and if like you said I can't ever not enjoy a walk with Maddie or a run with Maddie like the man just makes me smile no matter how oh. of a mood I'm in um, and so it used he, to be me I used to do that <laughs> That's... Tom, you're out. Maddie, you're in. Yeah, <laughs> but it's funny well, because I yeah. love the humor from both of you in such like different ways. And but yeah, Maddie just always always makes me laugh. So, but Susie Chan, and what an inspiration! You know, to start running in your late 30s, I feel very you know that resonates with me because I started running in my late 30s. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm nothing like Susie Chan, but like it just feels like <laughs> yeah. oh, I could you know like that is inspirational. I could continue to grow into that so and then as far as like yoga i mean ross rayburn of course i mean first of all just like the nicest person on the planet that's that's bar none and then like the, all of the yoga instructors are great they just are so very relaxing you know chelsea jackson roberts with how accessible she is like oh. you take one of her classes even if you can't do yoga you're just like okay I did that. Like, I did that. That's okay. <laughs> oh, I totally, I was at Ross's first class back after the pandemic in the new studio. I don't do yoga. <laughs> I don't do yoga. And beforehand, the, the you know, there's seven spots in there. I was like, guys, I booked this because I was like, oh, I want to get into the studio and I would love to see Ross. I have so much respect for him and meditation and whatnot. I'm like, but now it's hitting me. I don't even do yoga. Right. And they were like, Melissa, don't worry. You're going to do great. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. And then next thing you know, he's going through. He's like, okay, so it's your 700th yoga. I'm like, guys, you literally played it down how good you were. And I'm over here like struggling with downward dog. I was, and his husband was there. who's also absolutely fantastic. I was like, I was like, can I just, can somebody else take my spot? I am not supposed to be here at all. So I will always remember that. But yes, the yoga instructor's are amazing. And Susie, I have to give her huge like props. She is amazing. She's absolutely like something to strive for, such an inspiration. Um, I'm dying to go to London. I think the London instructors have such a different vibe and are just so fun loving. So I truly, I know I'm going to get there this year. I'm, I'm just dying to go. I don't know if you've been, but no, oh, no, I not. haven't been to London. I keep, it's like on my list, but it's like such, it's, oh, it's such a long trip. Like, you Especially know, Especially from St. Louis. Yeah. And then we've got, know. you know, the teenagers and it's like, do we take them? Do we not take them? I mean, can't, can't they figure that out on their own? <laughs> like, do they need me to take that? You know what I mean? <laughs> don't say, I just had this conversation. Somebody was asking me like, oh, like, you know, when you, when you go to London are you bringing your daughter who's two and a half, I was like, like, no, no, she will not be going. Yeah. She will be staying somewhere she else. She can't keep up on the sightseeing. There's no way. <laughs> Absolutely not happening. She And I want to be able to enjoy. And, you know, as parents, you just want to have like a second to breathe and relax. Um, but yeah, the London instructors can't wait, want to go, love all of them. Yes. Yes, definitely. So uh, what is your leaderboard name? So my leaderboard name is super boring. It's Moms of Peloton. Oh, okay. right? makes it's sense. Like, you know, no, that's branding. Nice little, that's yeah. branding. Branding the shit out of it. But I was thinking about it the other day because my leaderboard name started out as Miss New Jersey, right? <laughs> before my husband. And I was like, Miss New Jersey, fun. They'll, no one will get that wrong. Miss New Jersey. And then I got married and I changed it to Mrs. New Jersey. <laughs> so it was available. Like, okay. 
<laughs> it was available. Okay. I, don't, I would love to still grab it because I loved that leaderboard name. And then I had my kid, I had my baby, and I was like, all right, how am I going to do this? I gained so much weight during my pregnancy because it was through COVID. Um, so I changed my name to Mama's Fallen Ass. <laughs> Because I was I was literally hauling like 65 extra pounds up those hills. I was like, I'm truly hauling ass right now. This is not easy. Um, and then I changed it to Moms of Peloton to just make it easier for all the challenges and whatnot that I have. So that makes that's sense. the story. Long story, Tom, of my, my leaderboard names. Well, if you want Mrs. New Jersey, you should probably create a dummy account and go snag it before this airs. Absolutely. <laughs> I know. And I'm like. Because you feel like such a weird connection to I it. I do. Yeah. I know exactly how you feel. Right? Yeah. And if you do do that, you could always keep it just because you never know when you might want to like ride and nobody knows. Just hop on by yourself without. Maybe you don't want all the high fives. Maybe you don't want to have 17,000 people you know on. Sometimes you just like a little quiet. <laughs> I know. I know. And I always think about that. I'll be in a ride from like 2019 by myself. And then all of a sudden someone pops up and they're high fiving. And I'm like, no, I just wanted to. <laughs> and I love it. I, I mean, I love everybody. But I'm like, oh, exactly like you said. You want that moment to just be alone in your, you know. I cry on the bike. I'm laughing on the bike. I'm like, I want to be in my emotions, my bike emotions solo. Absolutely. Well, uh, thank you so much for for doing this, Melissa. We really appreciate it. Uh, Before we let you go, tell everybody where they can find you on social media. (laughs) Yes, you can find me at Moms of Peloton on Instagram. Um, I'm going to be doing a podcast later on in the year that has nothing to do with Peloton at all. So follow along for those ventures. But yeah, and on the leaderboard, Moms Peloton. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Yes, we do. Thank you, guys. Thanks. And virtual high five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, even Tom jumped in. Well, it's virtual. It's not yeah. Five, so, yeah. Yes. The clip out. So I guess that brings this episode to a close. Until next week, where can people find you? They can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Crystal D. O'Keefe. They can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and the Peloton leaderboard at Clip Out Crystal. And you can find me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. You can find the show online, facebook.com slash The Clip Out. While you're there, like the page, join the group. Of course, don't forget our Patreon at patreon.com slash the clip out so that's it for this one thanks for tuning in and until next time keep pedaling oh and running there you go (laughs) and rowing